uh, a dancer and ATP, this kind of pure energetic signaling is very important yes. for the physiological and the pathological conditions. But, but the function is not well studied. A large limitation is, you know, we, we are lacking of tools that enable us to detect this kind of chemical, yeah. uh, to know how they, uh, where they are secreted, or how they communicate with uh, the downstream uh, neurons, the downstream cells. Yeah, so uh, because they, structurally they are very similar, the ATP, ADP and adenosine, they are very similar. So we need a method that will enable us to monitor these kind of chemicals with very good um, uh, specificity, sensitivity, uh, non-invasiveness, also, you know, with very good spatial and temporal resolution. Yes. Yeah. So that's why we, we are developing tools, genetically encoded tools, so to, to achieve this kind of mo uh, in vivo monitoring. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, why w what I'm um, uh, doing the, um, the pyrenetical transmitter sensors. Even though someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? Five, four, three, two, one. Ni hao, everyone. Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are on site in Beijing, China, at Peking University Life Sciences. We are now going to be talking about purinergic transmitter sensors. We have Dr. Zhao Fa Wu joining us on the show. Hi, Fa. Hi. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Hi, Alan. Thank you. You're so welcome. I'm so blessed to be here in Beijing at School of Life Sciences. I love it here. You guys are doing great work. And I'm pumped to be talking about you, about your field. For those that don't know, Fa is a postdoc in the Li lab at Peking University School of Life Sciences focused on pure energetic transmitter sensors. And you can find the link in the bio below. All right, Fa, let's start things off by asking you, what are your thoughts on the direction of our world? Oh, um, that's really a big question. Uh, actually, I, I think I have, um, I don't know whether I have a good, good answer for this kind of question. Uh, I think um, the world now, we, we can, people are becoming rich. They have more and more money, right? So, uh, but people, people care about their house, so, right? So, um, how, but how the, the diseases happen? What, uh, how could we kill, uh, well, how should we kill uh, these kind of diseases? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, for a lot of diseases, we still have no answer, right? So that's, that's what I'm uh, really interested in. Especially for the uh, for the, um, w w w the for the brain disorders, yes. people have uh, no un not too much answers for this kind of brain disorders. So, uh, although they have we have uh, do a lot to um, we ha now we have um, know something about the brain disorders, but not fully understood. So that's that's the, I think one um, a limitation is the the brain is very complex, right? They can um, billions of millions of neurons. They communicate with each other, so we don't know which kind of neuro, neurons or neural circuits they have this kind of uh, they, that do not work well. So, so that's why we need um, some tools to you know to enable us to imaging this, uh, so, so that we can see the neural communication to see which which kind of communication is uh, is changed in the uh, disorder conditions. So that's uh, what I think uh, for the future. Uh, for, for as a neuroscientist, uh, what I think about the uh, Yes. Yeah. Yes, because you, you make this good point that we're getting so much richer uh, and that people want to live longer. They want to live healthier every yeah. single day. Yeah. But then we have so many diseases that come up within our bodies. And so we need to understand the brain really well to prevent some of the neurodegenerative diseases. We need to understand just how the building better tools to understand these complex organs yeah. like the yeah. brain. Yeah, this is a key point. I like that. And then how about where were you born? Tell us about your journey. How did you get interested in science? Um, I think um, as a young young children, uh, actually, I, my tr my parents they gave me some a lot of freedom. You can choose whatever you, you want. 
So when I, I as a as a uh, I think as a child in your childhood and uh, do, uh, as a teenager, uh, actually I don't know, I don't know what kind of uh, work I, I will I will work on in the future. Uh, so, um, but my parents uh, encouraged me to try more, right? You, you should. Um, so, so that's what. So I I I think um, I'm doing science because I'm I I do not hate science. Um, so when I when I'm uh, truly working on science, I think I'm I'm feel in love with with science. Yes. yes. Yeah. So when I went to college, uh, I <coughs> actually I um, I study the plant science uh, during the co college. Yes. Co uh, yeah. And where were you born? Uh, I was born in the in Shandong province at uh, China, in yeah. Um, in the not in the middle uh, east of China, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. And then you went to the no, northwest, northwestern A yeah. and F agriculture and forestry. Yeah, I, I went to the northwest agriculture and forestry university to uh, yeah, for the college. So I'm studying the plant protection at that time. Yes. Yeah. So uh, when I apply for graduate um, uh, school. Actually, I am because I'm actually I'm uh, working on the plant protection uh, in the college, so uh, it, it's difficult to think how how I changed uh, from the plant science to the to the um, uh, neuroscience. Yeah. So when I apply for the graduate school, uh, actually I don't know which kind of major I want to, uh, what kind of uh, science I want to do in the future. Let's talk about the plant science though, okay. because this is this is still really interesting stuff. So plant mm -hmm. protection, yeah. how pathogens interact with plants. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So teach us about what you were studying. Um, actually, we use the uh, we study a, a pathogen, and and how the the pathogen interacts with this kind of uh, um, plant. Uh, we start we the plant we are interested in is the rice. And the the white, white. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so uh, because when the pathogen infect the the rice, usually they will get a loss, f uh, less production for yes. the for the rice. Yes. So, so so that's very important to know how the uh, the pathogen interact with the, the the host. Yes. Yeah. So so that we can have a way to treat to you know to plant uh, to protect the the, the plant. To kill the, this kind of pathogens. So, but how were you protecting the plant against the pathogens? Yeah, like against what, yeah. What were you doing? Um, actually, we we are doing research. Yeah, we want to know the mechanism, how the mm -hmm. pathogens they can you know infect the uh, mm. infect the, the 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 plants. What was the mechanism for the pathogen to infect the plant? Yeah. What what well, what is it though? Do um, they have different ways. The, the the pathogens they are very smart. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very smart. So they have different ways to uh, infect the 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 rice uh, or the, the pl other plants. So the rice they also uh, fit with the, the pathogens. Mm -hmm. This kind of they they fit with each other. So they have different ways. The pathogen have different ways they can infect the the plant. Mm. And the the rice rice they can uh, feed back. And defend. And defend back, in back. Different yeah. ways. In different ways. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, yeah. I think that's very also very interesting. Uh, you know, interactions between the those two. Yeah. yeah. Especially because rice feeds so many people, probably yeah. billions of people around mm -hmm. the world, and so in order to better feed feed people more effectively, you want to study the pathogen interaction and try and boost up the plants. The rice's ability to compete against the pathogen, so it can have a greater yield, yeah. more food yeah. to feed people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then that was for four years, and then you decided to um, go. Actually, I I'm doing research for uh, two years during the uh, as a grad undergraduate. Okay. Yeah. So I I'm, I'm studying the the plant production. We have some course, the biology course, the yes. plant the plant science. The plant pathogen and some insect. Yes. Insect science. Insect science. And you guys do two years of general studies. A general studies. And then two years of specific. For, to for me, I yes. I work in the lab for two uh, about two years. Two years. Yeah. And then how did you decide to come to Beijing to life sciences here? 
you know, when I I'm going to graduate from the college, I I decide to do uh, to continue my scientific career. So, uh, but which kind of uh, research should I uh, work on? So at that time, I actually have no idea. Mm -hmm. So what what I'm doing is I you know, if you don't know what to do, um, you 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 can talk with the, the senior person, mm -hmm. uh, such as our mentors or the teachers. Yeah, so I talk about uh, talk a lot with my teachers. So they also the senior people. Yeah, we talk with. So they give give me some suggestions. So at that time, I decided to come to Beijing because uh, in Beijing they have a lot of uh, scientists. They work on different brand, uh, uh, areas. So I uh, went. Uh, I went to the summer school at the. Um, and the Chinese academic science. Mm -hmm. At that time, I know a lot of people from uh, uh, different college, uh, different university of China. They work on different, um, uh, different, uh, different projects. So at that time, I know not only the plant science, but also the uh, other science, such as the, the neuroscience, or the uh, uh, neuroimmune, or, or the. Uh, um, uh, uh, cancer, sci cancer science. So, uh, so when I, in the summer school, I think that's given me more chance to know, uh, you know, what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can do something different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, after this summer school, I went to the Peking University. Cool. So you yeah. kind of got a little taste of cancer science, neuroscience, of different sciences, yeah. and then you figured you wanted to pursue the neuroscience at Peking exactly. University. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, at that time, my mentor, Dr. Yunlong Li, uh, gave me uh, gave me off gave me uh, an opportunity to uh, as an interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, interview opportunities, opportunity. So we talk with each other for at least I think for more than f five hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he gave me a lot of suggestions. At that time, he just set up the the lab. Mm -hmm. He gave me a lot of uh, suggestions. He. I think what uh, year was this? This was 2012? Uh, 2013. 13. 13, okay. 13, yeah, 2013. 2012, yeah. Okay. 2012. I was an undergraduate at that time. Yes. Yeah, I okay. went to the, the graduate school at 2013. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, we talk, about, talk a lot about the, the future. So he, he want me to, um, he gave me an offer at that time to, mm -hmm. uh, to study in his, in his lab. So uh, uh, now after f uh, six years, uh, more than six, six years, years yeah. I think I have made a good, uh, a right choice. Yeah. yeah. I'm, um, well, I'm, um, I think I love this kind of neuroscience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you were first talking to Yulong and you were figuring out what your role was going to be in your graduate studies and helping him set up the lab and all this type of stuff, what were you thinking about that process of, of helping him with this process, but also with you figuring out what you wanted to do at the lab at your undergraduate study or your graduate studies? How did you figure that out? Um, I think sometimes um, for the young, for the young, um, the, the undergraduate, sometimes you don't you don't know exactly which kind of um, science you want to do, right? So it's uh, quite. It's not easy to make a choice, to make a decision what kind of science you want to do. So at that time, I think if you don't know what kind of science you want to do, just try. Mm -hmm. Try something. Yes. Yeah, rather than, you know, you're just waiting. Exactly. You're wasting our time. Try different things and try, then and you then find decide. what you like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can, you know, talk with smart people, talk with the senior people to, to say which kind of um, Mm. Science you want. Mentors help a mentors lot. Have, yeah. 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 Mentors yeah. have helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think that. I think and so, so then when you guys were setting up the lab, what was your conversation about for the, you know, those, these last six years that you've been uh, doing this more than that? How has it been setting up the lab, helping um, with that process? Also, you figuring out what you wanted to do in your graduate studies. How did you figure that out? Um, you know, when Yulong set up the new lab, Actually, we want to do something, you know, totally different. We want to do something big, you know, and so so we decide to, you know, because in the in the brain, we are studying the brain science. So in the brain, they have some um, chemicals, 
they call neurotransmitters. They are very important for the neuron neuron communication. So, but uh, but whether they have some 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 new neurotransmitters, neurochemicals, they can serve as neurotransmitters. At that time, we don't know. So we want to study this kind of question by or we want to screen to see whether they have such kind of uh, chemicals. So I so in the in the I think of. Um, for more than three to four years, I'm studying this kind of um, a question, whether they have some uh, new chemicals that can serve as neurotransmitters in the brain. So, but I think uh, you, you, at the beginning, you, you know, we, are, we, are, we have such a green hand. So we, we, we don't know whether this can work or not. So Dr. Lee gave me a lot of suggestions, also gave me a lot of freedom. You can try, uh, you can explore a lot. But after four years, actually, uh, three to four years, actually, I, I, I think I, th this kind of question is a little bit uh, difficult mm -hmm. for, the un for the graduate students. Yeah. So, I, so um, after four years, I give up this project. Yeah. So I changed this project to, uh, to another project. That's what uh, we, are t we are going to talk maybe in the next few minutes. So we, uh, I changed the product to uh, focus on the uh, 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 developing sensors for monitoring this kind of pure electrical transmitters, mm -hmm. uh, such as the adenosine and the ATP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think uh, when you, when as a uh, graduate students, as a PhD students, I not only learn how to do research, but also I learned how when should you start and when should you give up. Uh, sometimes. You know, because the product sometimes if the project stuck for a long time, um, I I think you sh you should uh, think of um, thinking in different ways, or you can give up, or put it uh, uh, hold on, and do another project, and then mm -hmm. uh, in the future if you um y when you get more experience, you yes. can go back to for your for this project. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this is a very important point. It's that you have, uh, when you're first putting together the lab, you're taking on this big challenge for a graduate yeah. student of trying to figure out um, of like, can I, can I probe this new area of science? And sometimes it's important to like to say, hey, maybe I should put this on hold and I should do something else for now. And maybe later when I gain more experience, I can come back to mm -hmm. it. Um, so it's actually, that's a really important point to know when to put something um, on hold or to give it up and focus on something else. Mm -hmm. So then the last um, two years uh, or more now being spent on uh, pure energic transmitter sensors. So what is that pure, what is pure energic? So let's start with that. What is that? Um, yeah, uh, the pure energy transmitters, uh, actually it's a class of molecules. They, they have this uh, kind of pure um, um, group, such as uh, ATP. We're, we're familiar with the ATP, right? Inside of the cell, the ATP uh, is a very important energy, energy source. But when the ATP is released from the cell, you know, it can, it can serve as a signal molecule. The ATP and its, um, set, its derivatives, such as the ADP, with, with, uh, with two phosphate phase group, and the adenosine without the phosphate group. They are all, they are this kind of the class of chemicals, they are called pure energetic transmitters or modulators. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, this kind of chemical. This kind of chemical are very important for controlling a lot of uh, physiological um, con um, conditions, for example, for our breath control. The ATP, ATP is very important for the breath control. Yes. And adenosine is actually very important sleep substance, yes. also uh, called thermogens. So do, do you know which, what kind of this chemical? Yeah, you taught me when we first got here, yeah, caffeine. I, 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 I want to give, uh, give as this a present for you. This is such a nice gift, yeah. I really appreciate actually, it. Actually, this, yeah. this is um, um, this structure called the caffeine. Yeah, yeah it's the caffeine me molecule. Ca caffeine molecule. Yeah, Yeah. so we, when we drink coffee, you will feel a a uh, awake, right? Yes. Yeah, that's why we feel awake. That's because the, the actually the caffeine will compete with the indulgent thermogen. That's it, a dance. Mm -hmm. So compete with the thermogens. So people, when you drink coffee, you will feel 
feel awake. So mm -hmm. it's very important for the sleep, uh, sleep control. So, adenosine. Ad so adenosine is being modulated in our bodies for sending us closer to sleep. Yeah. And caffeine, when we drink caffeine, the caffeine molecule targets the same receptors that adenosine is trying to exactly. make us go to sleep. Exactly. And so it blocks, blocks caffeine the blocks. Ca block the adenosine signaling so that people will feel uh, uh, weak, right? Yeah. 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 So, so <coughs> but for this kind of uh, um, molecules, these pure nutrient molecules, they, they are very important, right? Uh, and the malfunction of this pure nutrient uh, transmission is associated with a lot of pathological diseases, such as, the, you know, the, uh, the pain sensation. ATP is very important for pain sensation. Pain. Pen. Pen. A uh, neuro neuroinflammation. Oh, neuroinflammation. And uh, the pen. Pen sensation. Pen sensation. Yeah. Pen. Uh, P. P A I N. Pain sensation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and oh. Oh. Which 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 one? Uh, ATP is for pain. ATP is very important for pain. You said. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, and so like the cell. So would it be like the 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 cells here? They can secrete uh, A ATP. ATP to, to communicate to the, through the nervous system to the brain that there's pain. They can not only secrete in the, uh, in the brain, the central um, uh, neuro, neuro system, they can also uh, secrete in the peripheral in system. In the peripheral system, yeah. yeah. But uh, that is the malfunction of adenosine signaling is associated with the scissors epilepsy. Yeah, the malfunction mm -hmm. of adenosine signaling is deals with epilepsy. Epilepsy, yeah. yeah. Also, uh, now uh, a public FDA approved drugs. Uh, now it um, uh, called acetylcholine. I I forgot the name. It can target to the adenosine receptor, the mm -hmm. A2A receptor. It can be used as a um, drug for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Uh, just wow. like FDA approved. Interesting. Yeah. So targeting adenosine receptors is also for treating Parkinson's. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So so the uh, that that means the uh, adenosine and ATP, this kind of pure energetic signaling, is very important yes. for the pa physiological and the pathological conditions. Yes. But but the function is not well studied. A large limitation is you know we we are lacking of tools that enable us to detect this kind of chemical. Uh, to know how they com uh, th where they are secreted, yes. or how they communicate with uh, the dancing uh, neurons, the dancing cells, yeah. So uh, because they structurally they are very similar, the ATP, ADP, and the dance, they are very similar. So we need a method that will enable us to uh, we can sense, uh, we can sense, we can uh, monitor these kind of chemicals with very good um, uh, specificity sensitivity. Uh, Non-invasiveness, also, you know, with a very good spatial and temporal resolution. Yes. Yeah. So that's why we, we are developing tools, imaging tools. Mm -hmm. So the genetically encoded, genetically encoded tools, so to to achieve this kind of mo uh, in vivo monitoring. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, why w what I'm um, uh, doing the um, the pure transmitter sensors. And you were doing some of that um, in vivo monitoring um, in partnership with uh, Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell, tell us about how you can do um, in vivo uh, monitoring and imaging spatially, temporally of mm -hmm. like adenosine or of ATP um, transmission. Because this is, this is very hard to do. How did you get, how were you guys figuring out how to um, image it? You know, uh, it's, I think it's not easy to uh, monitor in a real human, right? Yeah. So we, we use the, the uh, model, the yeah, model system. Uh, sometimes we work on the fly, use the Drosophila, Drosophila as a yeah. uh, model. But for me, I actually I use the, the r ma mice mm -hmm. uh, as a model. Yeah. So we can, you know, inject, we can inject the sensor in the, in the mouse brain, and we use the optical method to monitor this kind of, um, uh, the dynamics of a dinosaur during mm -hmm. this kind of sleep and wake cycles. What do you inject into the mouse? Uh, you're, you're, we use this kind of um, virus. 
Which one? Which uh, one? AAV, the adenos, the, the um, AAV virus. A? AAV. AV, adenosine virus. Um, what does it stand for? Uh, it's aden uh, stand for the adenine, adenine associates uh, oh. virus. Oh, adenine associates yeah. virus, okay. Yeah, that's a very generally used um, okay. virus for the neuroscientists. Okay, yeah. and then that does so, so what? That, so that is the sensor, the optical sensor. It, it, it helps uh, become an optical sensor for imaging. It helps so you image. Yeah, because uh, yeah, so, so that the sensor can express in the brain. And then you can use the optical system to record the, 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 the signals. Mm -hmm. If you can, you can see a signal change, that means a denison release. Oh, so, yeah. so the virus does what to the neurons that makes it easier to image? What does it do to the neurons? Uh, the virus can express the sensor. Can express the sensor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In, in the in the. Oh, which neuron. makes it so that you can image it. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so then you image it with. Is it with the long wave? Is it the. What do you, what are you using for the optical imaging again? Uh, what is it actually, we use we call it the fiber photometry, the photometry. F yeah, photometry. Yeah. So so yeah. we can uh, we can have uh, the the optical recording uh, inside uh, inserted in the mouse brain. Uh, we can have a fiber uh, connected with the the uh, the our computer, mm -hmm. so so that you can during the the mouse can uh, free moving. Okay. Yeah, they they can sleep. Uh, also, you have this kind of EEG and EMG recording. You so have both of those two. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that you will know whether the mouse are asleep uh, awake. Yeah. Right. So so also you can record this optical signal. Right. And how are you? This is non-invasively, or um, invasively. Uh, I think it's um, compared. You, I think it's it's okay. Yes, uh, yeah. but it does go through. Does it? Ele do you have electrode glass electrodes in the brain? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so it's difficult to do in the human, right? But I can yes. do the, that in the mouse. In yes, the yes. mouse. Yeah. And but the, and the mouse can move, no problem. Yeah, they can move. They can free move. And yeah. the electrodes stay in place for reading, in and out. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's a big challenge. Is making sure that the that if the mouse is moving, that you can still not damage the neurons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we already insert this kind of optical um, fiber um, before we record. So it lets the mouse to recover for more than two two uh, two weeks at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so the mouse would recover for for more than two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. And then you would go again. Yeah. Okay. Int okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, I think that's the best way that we can record the the, the you know record the, the signals. That's the best way. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Of course, we can also do the imaging. You know, we yes. can use the two photon microscope. Yes. To imaging the brain, but the two photon microscope usually you cannot work on very deep and uh, mm. uh, very deep. It can image in the cortex, for example. Mostly cortex. Cortex, yeah. but not very deep. Yeah. But use this kind of fiber photometry. You can insert the fiber in very deep, deep uh, brain center. Yes. So then you can recall this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And then so then how were you? What were you doing to the to the to the mouse? You were just watching. Okay. As it's going to sleep, there's more adenosine, and you yeah. Were yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's the first time that we can enable us to monitor the adenosine dynamics in real time during the sleep and the wake cycles. So uh, we also have some interesting finding because um, we have this kind of new technologies. Usually they will give us some new findings. For example, uh, the paper is not published. For example, uh, I want to uh, give you some um, information that uh, because the mouse usually they, they are Actually, during sleep, they have two kinds of uh, two classes of sleep. They call the REM sleep and non REM sleep. Mm -hmm. The REM sleep, such as uh, like the human, they are dreaming. Mm -hmm. right? During the REM sleep, actually, using the traditional method, because the dreaming usually uh, uh, have a very short period. So, so using the previous method, you cannot. You, it's difficult to record the dancing levels during this REM sleep. But with our genetic tools. We can monitor the, their in real time. 
So, we, so that's, that's we can know what's happening here during the, RAM, during the monthly dreaming. Yeah, we have some uh, very interesting finding. Uh, we are co collaborating with the collaborators at the Shanghai, as, as you, I introduced with you. Yeah, so, uh, so one thing I want to emphasize is, you know, for different scientists, usually they have different expertise, right? So for, for us, we are good at uh, developing this kind of optical, the, uh, the genetic encoding, uh, these tools for, for the neuroscien neuroscientists. But people, uh, the uh, other neuroscientists, for example, they, they are good at to understand the brain in the circuitry level, for example. And some of them, they, are, they want to know what happens in, in the pathological uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. So we want to collaborate with different, different experts expert in the field. Yeah. So that's why I went to uh, Shanghai, you know, because they, in this group, they are good at uh, in vivo recording, yeah, uh, optical recording. Uh, so they are also uh, experts in the sleep and awake uh, studies. So that's why I went there. Uh, I want to apply our you know, sensors in the in vivo conditions mm -hmm. to uh, first of all, uh, to prove our sensor can work mm -hmm. in the in vivo conditions. Mm -hmm. And that's the use of this sensor. We hope we can, you know, find, uh, get some new findings. Yeah. So I, I think uh, collaborating with others is very important. Yes, yeah. yes. So you take this, and the, the adenosine sensor itself, or these um, pure, pure energetic sensors themselves, um, are a combination of what again? The combination of the, the virus that you were talking about that enables you to do the sensing and also then the optical recording. method recording. Yeah. So it's both the virus that mm -hmm. gets applied into the in vivo condition first and then the optical recording yeah. that comes. So that's the sensor package. Yeah, the this, this sensor actually I packaged in the virus. So that it's you can- just package in the virus. So that okay. you can use the, the virus to infect the, the neuron so that the sensor can express in the neuron. The sensor is packaged in the virus and it's, you said it's genetically encoded. encoded yeah. So then you, 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 do you edit the virus so that it, that when it, it gets expressed by the neuron, then it enables the optical imaging. So you, you had to edit this virus to make it yeah. do the sensing. Yeah. But we can also you use genetically encode yeah. the virus. Uh, this virus is uh, they have uh, such as um, such a kind of pseudotype. So you know they they can carry these uh, sensors. You can change different sensors. So the, the virus can carry these um, sensors uh, and to infect the, the the neuron and to express this kind of uh, sensors in the neuron. Does that make sense? <laughs> Say it one more time. So the virus, so you can package the virus, the, the sensors, different sensors, for example, the adenosine sensor, the calcium sensor, the ATP sensor, all um, different sensors. You can package it individually in the virus. Cool. Uh, so the virus can you know, carry this kind of um, sensors and to infect the neuron so that the sensor can express in the neuron. Cool. Yeah. So, so the, the virus actually, and we use this virus as a, um, a tool also yes. to carry our um, carry our sensor sensor yeah yeah to the virus is used as a tool to carry the different sensors for adenosine or ATP etc yeah. into the neurons which then ex it gets expressed which then makes them able to be imaged yeah yeah okay so, this is so cool. yeah, yeah, yeah I I think I we should we, we shouldn't talk too much about the virus it may, will make people Worry about that. Right? Yeah, well, sometimes when we talk to um, about the viruses, sometimes people say that um, that the virus is uh, uh, there's a you know you have to fight against the immune response. There's mm -hmm. an immune response by the body. Yeah, you have to fight against that. Yeah. Then sometimes the virus I heard um, different viruses only last for whatever a couple mm -hmm. weeks or months or mm -hmm. whatever, and then they just fade away. Yeah. So, so for the neuroscientists, we, we engineer, uh, not, not us, so the people have engineered this kind of virus to make it uh, very safe. So, so that we can use the, the uh, virus to carry out the genes w we want and to infect the, the cells. 
in, including the neurons. Yeah. So, so they are very safe because they are engineered. Also, they are widely used uh, for the neuroscientists. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I think um, but people, they don't know too much about that. The, the people will scare about this kind of virus, right? But if it's engineered, like you said, specifically to carry a tool mm -hmm. and for research, for research, and yeah. also that it's being done on mice for now, and then we can prove maybe that it can be done with humans and it can yeah. be done safely. Yeah. This, yeah, is yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's hard to test if it's safe because it has to be, you know, m several years down. You have to see if there's any effects. Yeah, it's very exactly. hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, how about the m most interesting applications of this? So, okay, you build these pure energetic uh, transmitter sensors, and then you have, what are their uses f besides in vivo imaging? You know, where do you want to see this used? Mm -hmm. What could it be optimally used for? Okay, uh, that's a good question. So we are, uh, you know, we are uh, developing these kind of tools. We wanted the tools to solve some um, problem, a question to answer some questions. For example, I think uh, uh, for uh, as I introduced the dense signaling or the pure energy signaling, they are very important for not only the uh, physiological conditions, but also for the pathological conditions. So uh, I think uh, the next question is very interesting, also very interesting and very important is what happens or what, what's the dynamic change of this kind of uh, pyrenoic transmitters in the pathological conditions, such as during the epilepsy. Whether the dancing release is uh, changed or not, or where did where the dancing change, dynamic change. So, Actually, we still have no answer. So, also, I, I introduced the uh, dancing also very important for the Parkinson's disease, mm -hmm. right? So, during the Parkinson's disease, the dynamics of dancing, how did the dancing dynamics change? So, next, I think uh, we will apply our sensors, not only in the physiological condition, but also in the pathological condition, to help us to understand the mechanism for the, for the disease to happen. At least in, uh, from our pr uh, mm. the the neuro the pyrenoic transmitter perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's uh, I think uh, the, the applications of this this interesting. Sensors. So it's yeah. the big part is the the understanding the mechanisms of disease yeah. of pathology, uh, developing of the phy of physiology mm -hmm. first and then the pathology. Pathological. Yeah, yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so right now is the physiology. Study yeah, is being we, we have some um, preliminary data uh, in the epilepsy. So, so uh, now we demonstrated our sensor uh, can detect this uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. dancing release during the epilepsy. Yeah. So in the future, maybe you can uh, apply for uh, more diseases model. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. the we want to know regarding trans neural transmission we want to know about where the miscommunications are happening where the diseases are happening the pathologies are being developed so by building these sensors for all of the different neurochemicals then you can best understand how disease is developed exactly, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah that's what uh, our lab are trying to spend a lot of effort on developing the tools to monitor this kind of neurochemicals. Yes, yeah, yes. Including the pure energy transmitters. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So ideally, down the line in the future, let's say that the Lee Lab and many of the other labs, your work and many other neuroscientists work across the world, enables us to have the full uh, chemoconnectomics <laughs> of the brain, uh -huh. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what will we be able to do? For, I guess first is what would be the tool that would let us do the full chemoconnectomics? What would be the ideal neuroscience tool for that? Mm. And two, when we have that tool and we have the full chemoconnectomics ready all the time, what will that enable us to do? Prevent disease, stay healthy, 
be smarter? What will it invent us to do? So first the tool, second what will it enable us um, to do? From my perspective, I think first, <coughs> if you want to make some change, for example, you can, you want to be smarter, smarter, uh, be, want to be uh, more smart, or you want to, you know, uh, to kill, to treat the, the diseases. The first step is to know, so, which kind of neural circuitry, which kind of um, chemicals they are controlling this kind of um, uh, be smart? Or for example, for, uh, controlling the learning and the memory, or controlling the Parkinson, uh, the malfunction they have the, these kind of diseases. So uh, the first, I think you should um, know the mechanism, the how, how the brain works first. That's the first step. Then you will know what changed in the, mm -hmm. um, in the uh, disorders, right? So I think the first step is to, to understand the brain and then to change the brain, right? <laughs> so I think to understand br brain is the first step. So uh, we need some tools, we need uh, this kind of imaging tools. So when you have these uh, uh, sensors, for example, you should have the microscope or the opt optical imaging tools, right? Not only the, the sensors, but also the microscope, right? Mm -hmm. Also, the how to deliver these tools in the brain. You should have this kind of tools that can for the delivery. For example, the, the virus, uh, as I introduced. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So after these kind of tools, uh, sometimes maybe you can only work in the model system, mm -hmm. the, in the Drosophila, in the mouse. And that's how to use, when you understand the brain, after you understand brain in the model system, so that's consistent in the, in the human brain, right? So you, you sh should also have the tools that can imaging, or you can uh, you know, know what, what happens in the whole brain, in, especially in the human whole brain, right? So I think that um, we are trying effort to understand the, the brain. A different neuro neuroscientists, we work on different perspective, uh, different aspects. So we are trying to, you know, make us to know the brain, to understand the brain, and then, you know, make some change, or to treat the disease. Yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the tool set is so important for us to understand the brain, to have that chemokinetomics of tool set first. And then when we have it, then it's enabling augmentations, uh, healthier st brain states. All these types of things happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How about um, now that we have the exponential technology age happening, the democratization of so many of the of the information technologies? What do you think is a skill that young people should know around the world? Mm, I think uh, the first thing is you should um, have your own thoughts. Yeah, you should, um, you know, um, I, I think it's very important to um, think and the ability to learn. You know, we, we have a lot of information. You know, you, you, uh, you can learn from, the, from others, also from, uh, from the expert, for example, also from the senior person, or from your peers, from uh, collaborators. So, so the ability to learn is also very important. So I think two, two things. First, you have your own thoughts. And second, the, you should have the ability to learn. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. I like those two, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are very good. Especially in a world where we're constantly having information come at us to be able to un understand which one is the most important for me to learn. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 for me to take in, yeah, yeah. And then how about, um, you know, collaborating across the world? How can we increase collaboration for both scientific research, but also just increasing global harmony? How can we best do that around the world? Um, um, I, I think um, for the collaboration, you, you should, first you should open, my, open have an open minding, right? Yeah. You should, um, you know, uh, when you collaborate with our, with others, you should you should um, open, be open, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you hide something, you don't talk to all all of what you are doing to them. So I I don't like this kind of. So 
you should talk, talk what you have and to, to know how to, uh, to know their expertise and ask them for help. And uh, um, I think the most important is open minded. You should have an open mind. Yeah. 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 I like that a lot. And open mindedness is so important. And it also makes it easier for us to know that we can learn something from everyone. Yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 You should, should let people know what you have, what you need, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. How about what do you think is the meaning of? life of this big human experience what is the point of it that's another very big question mm -hmm. right yeah uh, difficult to answer mm -hmm. uh, the meaning of life mm. i think uh, uh for for me uh, as a you can call me a young scientist right mm. yeah <laughs> so uh, i think from my perspective so uh first i should do my uh, you know work uh, so um, I think uh, you should be a good person first. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, to be a good people, you know, you be kind to others, right? Yes. Yeah. To um, that's the first. Uh, as a human, you should be a, a kind of person. Yes. As a scientist, I think you should uh, have your own um, own. Um, I don't know how to say. Um, do, do not cross the roads, uh, the, cross the lines. Oh. You know, you should um, get a conclusion based on your result. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you be scientifically accurate. And, yeah, be scientifically and, accurate. Uh, and, um, and, and scientifically, um, uh, oh, um, honest. I'll be honest, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's uh, as a, as a human and uh, as a scientist, you should be honest. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, you can think about the meaning of <laughs> the meaning of your life. Right? Interesting. So, yeah. so I think that the first step is to be um, be kind and be honest. Yes. Uh, and and next, I think if I can do something, you know, for example, as a neuroscientist, if we can um, do something. Maybe it's very small, but it can help us to understand the, how the brain works, what happens in the diseases. So I think if I have, can do something in my whole life that uh, can help us to understand these kind of questions, I think that will be very meaningful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I think. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like this a lot. But. Yeah. I, I see. Um, yeah. Another thing I think as a scientist, I think. Um, you know, sometimes we we already communicate with with each other mainly through the you know uh, you, you, it's difficult to know every person, right? But what we can learn is from their public published papers, right? Yeah. So 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 that we can know their works. So when sometimes when you read a lot of people a lot of paper published by one one person, when you meet him. Um, Mm, uh, meet him, mm -hmm. you will feel, wow, it's you. We, it seems that we are familiar with each other, yeah. you know. So I think that's very excited, you know. I read a lot of paper, for example, from the big name of, in the field. Yeah. And when I meet, meet him, I will think, wow, we know, I know him, although he, maybe he, he don't know me, yeah. right? And so I know him. So he looks like my, you know, mentor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's very fantastic. Very, in, very interesting kind of thing for as a scientist. So, so we have our own way to communicate. Communicate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you know, meet the know the real, real person, that yeah. will be uh, you know, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, how about consciousness? Do you feel like consciousness is part of our biological phenomenon that comes up? Do you think consciousness may come from somewhere and take its seat in the body? What do you think? Uh, I, have, I, think I think I have no idea for the consciousness, but I think I, um, we, should, we should think in a scientific way, mm -hmm. not the God. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure, uh, I, uh, but uh, as a scientist, I think um, we should know um, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I have no idea. 
Mm -hmm. This is a very hard one too, and I'm just, we love asking about consciousness. It's such mm -hmm. an interesting one. And then how about, um, do you feel like we have free will? <laughs> um, um, I think so. Yeah. And why? Mm, I don't know. That's a personal feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. But you think so, okay. Yeah. And what do you think is the role of love in life? The role of love. Yeah. Life and love. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think, um, um, you know, some, sometimes when I work in the lab, I think I, that's kind of, I love this kind of yeah. uh, uh, doing experiment, for example. Yes. Yeah, when you, yeah, I think the work is my life, is a part of my life. Yes. Not, um, yeah, but I, do you think that's a good answer? <laughs> yeah. 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 I also feel lots of love when I do this. Yeah. You know? yeah. So to me, is this is love. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, doing something you are interested in that's uh, kind of um, make you happy. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, you will feel love, right? Yes. Yeah. Also, when sometimes uh, you know the doing experiment is diff is difficult. You you cannot you know, uh, get a good result. Yeah. yeah, most of the time we, are, we have a lot of failures. Yeah. yeah, at that time if you, you know, you know, if, so when I go back home, so my wife, uh, if he, she can give me a hug, I will feel love, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I think um, both the work and family, yes. they're also, they're all were, were very important for me. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the family is also very important. The family is also love. Yeah, the, also love. The, the, the spouse or the child, these are love, yeah. Husband, the wife, the child, these types of things. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Um, you know, as an undergraduate, so when, when I um, have the class, so the, 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 <coughs> the our teacher usually show us a lot of the pictures for the for the uh, bacteria, for you know, or, or for the fungi. So we can see the fungi with a large scale. Oh yeah. They are very beautiful. Yes. So that this the fungi is also very beautiful. Yes. But if you, you think a large, our brain is also very beautiful. The the neuron, they look so they have this kind of cell body, this neurites, this uh, dendrites, the axons. Yeah. They ha can send very long projections from one to another. Yeah. They, so if you can label the neurons with different color, you looks like a brain ball, like a ball. We call it brain ball. Mm. I think the brain ball. This, this I think this uh, brain communications. If you can visualize this um, brain communication, brain uh, brain cells, I think that's very beautiful part. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. And not only uh, as undergraduates, I think the fungi, these uh, bacteria, they are very beautiful. Uh, in a in macro, in a very small world, right? Yeah. yeah, very small scale. If you enlarge this scale, they are also very beautiful. But if, uh, for the brain, now we can visualize. If you can visualize this neuron communication, uh, these neurons, they, I think they are also very beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree, yeah. Paul. I agree. This has been such a fun conversation. Yeah. Thank you very much for thank coming you. on our show. Okay. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. this has been very enlightening. There's, this is a really interesting subject, pure energic transmitter sensors, and also what the applicabilities are for our future, for uh -huh. understanding the physiology and the pathology of it and having better health over time and mm -hmm. just building better tools for understanding the brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah congrats on all of the great work so far. And yeah, keep but, but up I think, you know, yeah. I have not been published yet, so I hope I can, uh, you know, publish our work. Yeah, so, publish so that work. Yeah, so that the yeah. people, the, all, all of the world, they are if they are interested, you can, you know, they can use these kind of tools yeah. to understand the brain. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, 
keep yeah keep going like pub this is this is really great so the pub the publishing of new tools for brain research can then inspire more scientists around the world to use those tools or also to make new tools themselves yeah yeah, yeah i totally agree this is really this has been super fun for those again that want to you know get involved get involved let us know your co thoughts in the comments below thank you very much for tuning in we really appreciate it we'd love to you know hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode we'd love for you to Check out the links in the bio below. Have more conversations with your friends, families, coworkers, people online about pure energetic transmitter sensors and about the subjects that we talked about building these better tools for the brain. And also support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the leaders around the world that you believe in. Support them, help them grow. Support Simulation, our show. You can find all of our links in the bio below to support us. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace and love. <laughs> and love. That's Thank it. You. That Thanks. was really fun. I had a really good time. Good I, job. I also have a very good time. That's the first good, time, good, you know, good, to, good. to have that kind of so you know, communication. I, good. I love it. <laughs> good, good. <laughs>